welcome to the Texas Conference Worship Experience. We're so glad you can join us today. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you. from Ephesians 3:16 to 19. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should how his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. In 1985, my life was miraculously spared by the intervention of an angel when I was being electrocuted. Long story short, by the next year I was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church 
And after a while, I began to feel that God was calling me to ministry. My problem was I had never thought about going to college. No one in my family had ever gone to college, and I had no money to go to college. So I made a, an agreement with God. I said, Lord, if you're really calling me to ministry, here's what I'll do. I'll sell my brand new BMW motorcycle, and I'll work to get out of the debt that I've accumulated from living in the world. And if I can get to zero, then I'm gonna trust you to provide the way for me to go to college because I don't know where that money's gonna come from. Well, my pastor uh, spoke to three gentlemen in the church who were businessmen and he said, maybe you wanna have something to do with helping somebody enter into ministry and just to have the blessing of being a part of that. And I thought that was strange. I never thought of anybody considering it a blessing to give their money away. Of course, I was a new Christian and I didn't understand that it's better to give than to receive. But that's exactly what happened. Three gentlemen pooled together and each one of them paid one third of my first year's college expenses. Well, that was just for tuition actually. My, the college I went to at Weimar, we worked for our room and board and uh, that was work education. But that was what set me on my way in order to begin in ministry. I was amazed when I got to the end of the summer, I was just about ready to get to zero. I said, Lord, I'm doing my part, but as I'm calculating my expenses, my last paycheck will get me to within $60 of paying off my debt. And there was a nice elderly couple in the church that said, Nathan, we know you're planning to go off to college because I was still making the plans by faith. And we wanted to get you a watch or some books or something, but we really don't know what you need. And so we thought, we'll just give you some money. They gave me an $100 going away gift. Um, so needless to say, I could pay off the $60 that remained on my debt. And I had $40 in my wallet and uh, flew across the country from Pennsylvania to California and was on my way. I'm amazed at how God can take care of our needs when we lay our lives before him and say, Lord, I want to follow your call. I want to do your will. I want to just step in the path that you have laid out for me, but I'm gonna trust you to provide the means that I need to do so. Uh, I didn't have much, but God had the resources and he provided, and I thank him for it. God is a rewarder of faithfulness. Join me in a prayer of commitment. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for all that you allowed into our lives this past year, the good along with the hard times, which have reminded us how much we need you and rely on your presence, filling us every single day. We pray for your spirit to lead us each step of the new year. We ask that you will guide our decisions and turn our hearts to deeply desire you above all else. We ask for your wisdom, for your strength and power to be constantly present within us. We pray for your protection over our families and friends. We ask that you would give us discernment and insight beyond our years to understand your will, hear your voice, and know your ways. Forgive us for the times we have worked so hard to be self-sufficient, forgetting our need for you, living independent of your spirit. Forgive us for letting fear and worry control our minds and for allowing pride and selfishness to wreak havoc over our lives. Forgive us for not following your ways and for living distant from your presence. We confess our need for you, fresh, new, again. We ask that you make all things new in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives for this new year. We pray for your refreshing over us. Keep your words of truth planted firm within us. Help us to keep focused on what is pure and right. Give us the power to be obedient to your word. And when the enemy reminds us where we have been, hissing his lies and attacks our way, we trust that your voice speaks louder and stronger. As you remind us, we are safe with you and your purposes and plans will not fail. Help us to be known as great givers, to be generous and kind, to look to the needs of others and not be consumed by our way only. May we be lovers of truth. May the fruits of your spirit be evident in our lives. Your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Shine your light in us, through us, over us, so that we may reflect your peace and hope to a world that so desperately needs your presence and healing. To you be glory and honor in this new year and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.
Welcome to our very first online Texas Conference service for 2021. We have a lot to be thankful for. God has been good to us over the course of 2020 in the midst of many woes and trials and dangers on all sides. The Lord has brought us through and by His grace we worship together on this first Sabbath of 2021. I trust that wherever you are that you and your family are safe and healthy, and in the grasp of the Lord Almighty as you enter this new year. May you be blessed and prospered in every way. Subject of the message this afternoon is, What Else is New? It's a reflection on the new year, the new opportunities, the new direction perhaps that God has for each and every one of us as we seek to serve Him and be faithful to Him in all things. Before we open the Word of God this afternoon, let's just pause for a second and bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the opportunity to come aside for a few minutes and worship you on this first Sabbath of 2021. Thank you, Lord, for your providence, your protection, your guiding presence throughout 2020. And now as we begin this new year, we ask for the Holy Spirit in a very meaningful way to guide and direct each and every one of us, our families, our churches, our schools, as we move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a poem written by Louisa Fletcher, and the words of the poem go as follows. I wish that there were some wonderful place called the land of beginning again, where all of our mistakes and all of our heartaches and all of our poor selfish grief could be dropped off like a shabby old coat at the door and never put on again. For what had been hardest, we'd know, had been best. And what had seemed loss would be gain. For there isn't a sting that does not take wing when we have faced it and laughed it away. And I believe that the laughter is most what we're after in the land of beginning again. I believe that we would all concur this afternoon that it would be splendid indeed if there were a place called a land of beginning again, a place where all the mistakes, all the heartaches of the past could simply be dropped off and left behind. As the poem eloquently articulated, a place where the stings take wings, where all of the hardships that have held us back and held us down in the past were released and we were able to live in the vigor and in the victory of the newness of life, where all the setbacks and all the slowdowns could be forgotten and that we could move forward in faith and with the assurance that God is with us. Well, I have good news for all of us this afternoon, and that is there does exist such a place. A place where all things are possible with God. And furthermore, a place where there is ample opportunity for new beginnings. In our story today, the Apostle Peter experienced that very same spiritual reality in a very significant way. You and I have read and heard the story many times. Peter had failed his master miserably time after time. And it was because of his fallen nature and his bent inclinations that he in pride so often spoke before he thought, acted before he considered. And after the trial, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Peter didn't know where he stood exactly with Jesus Christ. He was worried about perhaps a severed relationship with his master. 
Imagine to his astonishment and his amazement when he receives word back that the angels had said to the ladies at the tomb, who in turn had passed that on to the disciples, that Jesus wanted to meet with the disciples and with Peter as well. The angel at the tomb spoke uh, words of comfort. Let's read that in Mark chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. Mark chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, notice the words, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on before you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he promised you. What amazing attitude and response from heaven. Peter had failed. Peter had denied Christ. Peter had not been faithful. Yet as Christ uh, makes his first appointment with his faithful. He says, tell the disciples I will meet with them and Peter. God had forgiven him. And you would have thought that that would have been enough for Peter to gain confidence and to move forward in his spiritual life. But no, he was still mired. He was still buried in guilt and in, um, insecurity. And God, knowing that, reached out to him. God took an additional step beyond the invitation, tell the disciples and Peter. God took an additional step beyond that to undo Peter's misgivings and his apprehensions. We find the story in John chapter 21. Read with me now John chapter 21 verses 1 through 3. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself, notice how it says specifically, to Simon Peter. Thomas the twin, Nathaniel of Cana, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night, they caught nothing. So Peter, in his frustration... Not knowing, where, not knowing where he stood with Christ, feeling bad about his failure to maintain loyalty to Christ, he resorted back to what he knew best. He said, I'm going to go fishing. And his fellow disciples said, well, we'll go fishing with you. This passage begins with those all-important words, Jesus showed himself again. You see, it doesn't matter how many times we fail. It doesn't matter how many times we deny, like Peter. It doesn't matter how many times we fall short, like Peter. Christ always gives us another opportunity. A land of new beginnings. And that's what 2021 is for you and me. The timing that Jesus most used when he showed himself to his faithful all the time from Adam on down to us is when we are most vulnerable, when we are most in need. That's when Jesus comes and shows himself to us. You see, Peter was grieving deeply. He was beside himself really on the inside because he could not fix in his mind his relationship with Christ. He had failed. What would be the reaction of Christ when he came face to face with Christ for the first time. So and in that frustration, he says, I'm going to go fishing. I need to get my mind off of my spiritual woes, and I need to do what I know how to do best. He was about to experience a miracle, he and the other disciples, that they would remember for the rest of their lives. It reminds us that miracles are all around us. And sometimes we miss those miracles because we attribute them to human greatness, to human ingenuity, when in fact they are miracles of God that have no other explanation. Back in the 1980s, a woman by the name of Carol Simbala, 
she decided to make a little cassette tape recording for her church. And not finding enough, as she refers to it, appropriate music, she set out to write songs herself to be included in this recording. Now, the interesting part is that Carol Cimbala cannot read music, much less write music. But somehow she was able to write these songs for that very first recording and has gone on to write hundreds of other songs. And after 35 years of recording and live performances and Dove, Award, uh, Dove Awards and all types of other accolades from the Christian world, you may never have heard of Carol Cimbala, but I'm sure you've heard of the little choir that she directs, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Amazing. Carol Simbala, who cannot read music or write music, is writing music that has blessed millions with Christian words of comfort and the invitation of Christ from heaven itself. God's miracles are all around us. And he was about to perform a tremendous miracle for Peter and the other disciples. We go back to John chapter 21 now, verses 4 to 6. But when the morning had come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples, notice the words, did not recognize that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast, and now... They were not able to draw in the net because of the multitude of fish. What a tremendous miracle. Here you had P Peter and his fellow disciples who were lifelong fishermen, professional fishermen. They knew what they were doing. They knew what technique to use. They knew how to fish, and they fished all that night and caught nothing. And then comes Jesus. And from the shore, he commands them, throw the net on the right side of the boat. And they were drawing in fish so abundantly that they couldn't even lift the net into the boat. Here's what we learned. Number one, although Jesus was nearby, they did not recognize him. How many times has that happened to us? How many times has it happened to us in 2020? with COVID-19, with social injustice, with natural disaster after natural disaster, with political upheaval, and we as Christians cried out in our distress, Lord, where are you? And like the disciples and Peter, he's on the shore in plain sight, and we did not perceive him. Number two, it is always amazing how the Lord of heaven the king of the universe, the creator of all things, makes himself vulnerable to depend upon his own creation. Here was the creator of all things asking Peter and the disciples, do you have anything to eat? God asks us that same question as church members here in the Texas conference. As we go into 2021, can he do all things? Absolutely. Is he all-powerful? Absolutely. But he asked you, there in the Houston area, do you have anything for me? He asked you, here in the DFW area, do you have anything for me? He asked those of you who are that down there in the Rio Grande Valley in 2021, do you have anything for me? God, the God of heaven, who needs not ask anything of anyone, is asking us to bring our best to the preaching of the gospel, to the sharing of the gospel, to the finishing of the work. Number three, please notice that the difference between failure and success wasn't which side of the boat that they threw the net out on. It was following the instruction of Christ. It could have been the left side, it could have been the front of the boat, it could have been the back of the boat. Wherever Christ tells you to throw the net, you throw it because you believe, because he's never failed you yet. And then finally, 
There's that sad commentary that we find in verse 7. Then, after the miraculous catch, that disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. How many times, sadly, do we have to see the miracle first before we recognize it is the Lord? And I'm trusting and I'm praying that in 2021, we, the members of the Texas Conference, we don't have to wait to see the miracle. Don't have to wait to experience the deliverance. Don't have to wait for the bank account to be filled, to believe that it's the Lord that's with us at all times, in the good times and in the difficult times. Ellen White puts it this way, Desire of Ages, page 708. Jesus had a purpose in bidding them to cast a net on the right side of the boat. It was on that side that he was standing on the shore. That was the side of faith. If they labored in connection with him, his divine power combined with their human effort, they could not fail. Another lesson Christ had to give related specifically to Peter. Peter's denial of the Lord had been in shameful contrast to his previous professions of undying devotion. He had dishonored Christ and had incurred the distrust of his fellow disciples. They thought he was not to be allowed to take up his former position among them, and he himself felt that he had forfeited his place. Before being called to take up again his apostolic work, he must before them give evidence of his repentance. Without this, his sin, although repented of, would have destroyed his influence as a minister of Christ. Therefore, the Savior gave him an opportunity to regain the confidence of his brethren. So interesting. We like the disciples, we like to qualify who's qualified, who deserves to be in the Lord's presence. Whether it's in the church or whether it's in ministry, we love to cast judgment as to who belongs and who doesn't. The disciples, I imagine, mumbled among themselves, what is Peter still doing here? He denied our master. And Christ was showing the disciples a lesson just like he was showing Peter, that only he decides who is qualified to be in his presence. And that is no one. No one is qualified to be in his presence. But the Lord delights in redemption and restoration. And that's why he had a message in his message to Peter that was also for the rest of the disciples. God and God alone restores and rebuilds and regenerates and that's an important message for us to take with us throughout 2021. For all the falls that we've had in 2020 and even going back further, as we go into 2021, the Lord so desires to restore us and to use us as never before. In a remote village somewhere in the mountains of Switzerland, there is a little church, a beautiful little church called the Mountain Valley Cathedral, Mountain Valley Cathedral. It has high raptors in it. It has magnificent stained glass windows. But it's not known for those things. It is known for this old antique pipe organ that is there. People would come from all parts of Switzerland, all parts of Europe, and all places in the world to hear that old pipe organ. But one day, something went terribly wrong with the pipe organ. It no longer... Uh, played the melodious tunes that it was accustomed to play. And you could perceive disharmony coming from it. Musicians and experts were summoned. Yeah, each one tried to see if they could determine what was the problem with the organ. No one had any success. And one day, an old man bent over, walked into the church. He went up to the organ. With permission, he began to play. And he said to himself, what is wrong with this organ? And the gentleman, the custodian there in charge of the property said, well, something has happened. It's not tuned anymore. It's not playing melodiously anymore. And no one can fix it. And the older gentleman said, well, if you'll allow me, I will fix it. 
And the minister and the custodian and the others that were there, they looked at him and they said, how can he fix this organ if the professionals were not able to do it? But what do they have to lose? They let him go ahead and try to fix the organ. And he worked one day. He came back the second day, worked all day. He came back the third day, worked all day on the pipe organ. He came back the fourth day, and the custodian was getting nervous. How long is he going to take? Does he even know what he's doing? And on the fifth day, as the sun began to set in the west, the old man began to play the pipe organ, and once again, the beautiful, melodious tune that had come out when it had come from the hands of its creator began to pour forth from that old pipe organ. And the people rushed in and they said, how were you able to fix it, old man? And the old man said, it's simple. Fifty years ago, I built this pipe organ. I am the creator of this pipe organ. And only I knew what it needed to be fixed. And that's what we find in the story of John chapter 21 and in your life story and in my life story. There's only one who can fix us. There's only one who can direct us into 2021 with any type of success for his name's honor and glory. Realizing that indeed it was Christ himself that was waiting on the shore for Peter and the disciples, Peter dives into the water and he he swims at 50 yards or so from the boat all the way into the shore and runs toward Christ and embraces Christ. I can only imagine that that embrace that Peter gave to Christ on that shore that day was not unlike the embrace that Jacob gave Christ the night that he struggled and wrestled with Christ. That night when he wouldn't let Christ go and he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And this time Peter, the same one who had denied his Savior three times, as he embraced his Lord, I can imagine him saying, Lord, I will not let you go. I will not fail you again. I will never deny you again. John chapter 21, verse 9 and 10. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Then Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. I love that. Jesus was already frying up the fish. Jesus was already preparing the meal. He had fish from where? Only he knew. And he was preparing their breakfast. But yet as they came on to shore, tired, worn out, fatigued, from struggling to get that net full of fish to shore, he says to them, just like he says to you and me today, bring some of yours and add it to what I've already made. There's only one other place in the four Gospels where that phrase, let me read it again, verse ten, uh, 9, I'm sorry, John 21, verse 9, Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals. So only one other place, and it's right there in the book of John, when it talks about Peter denying his Lord, it was next to a fire of coals. So the message there is, beside one fire of coals, Peter had denied his Lord three times. Beside another fire of coals in John chapter 1, 21, Peter is restored and redeemed not only in his relationship with Christ, but in his ability to serve as a powerful disciple in the vineyard of the Lord. Restored. And so the invitation of Christ to his disciples to sit down and eat breakfast, to eat the fish, to partake of the meal. I imagine there was an awkward silence there through the whole meal. No one really knew what to say. Peter sure wasn't going to say anything. The disciples were mumbling inside of their minds now. Why is Peter sitting with us, with the master? But Christ breaks the silence, the Bible says. And he asked that question that Peter was dreading to hear. It's the one, the one question that Peter's 
was hoping and praying that the Lord would not ask. Same question he asked you and me today. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? So we asked ourselves this afternoon. When Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? Who are the these that he is referring to? The fishes, the boats, the other disciples, all of the above? The all meant everything. And the Lord asked Peter, is there anything within your sight here, or maybe even buried in your heart, that you love more than you love me? You need to answer that question before we can go any further. And I think as you and I go into 2021, that's the question that Jesus is asking us. Is there anything, your work, even your family, the church, your ministry, your bank account, your pleasures. Is there anything that you love more than me? Because if there is, that has to be resolved before we can go any further. Had Christ not confronted Peter with that difficult question, the disciple probably would have been bitter and broken for the rest of his life. He had to be confronted over the one issue that was separating him from eternal life and from Christ. Three times. Peter, do you love me more than these? A few seconds later, Peter, do you love me more than these? Oh, Lord, you know I do. And then the third time, Peter, do you really love me more than all of this? And Peter was undone. He finally came to the point where his spirit was broken. And all of that pride that had held him back for his whole life was let go. And Peter said, Lord, you know all things. I can't hide anything from you. I can't lie to you. I can't fake it. Just because I go to church doesn't mean I'm a Christian. Just because I carry my Bible under my arm doesn't mean I'm a Christian. Just because I'm the president of the Texas Conference doesn't mean I'm a Christian. Peter said, you know all things. I can't hide anything from you. And Jesus said within himself, I know now that he's ready. And it's interesting. How did Jesus respond to Peter's answer, Lord, you know everything? He said, Feed my lambs. Peter thought that was an odd response. So I imagine just the look of Peter itself of bewilderment. Jesus said for the second time, tend to my sheep. Peter's still confused. He doesn't understand. What does that have to do with do you love me? And for a third time, the Lord looks at Peter, looks right through his soul and says, feed my sheep. You see, it's one thing to feed God's sheep, and it's another thing to tend to God's sheep. Because anybody can feed the flock. But to be able to tend to the flock with all of its needs, the good and the bad. What Jesus was saying to Peter was, if you truly love me, you will love my sheep like you love me. You will take care of them the good and the bad, the uh, praise and the criticism, the acceptance and the rejection. Because when you participate in that, you're participating with me and you truly understand me. It's amazing, this story of redemption, this story of regeneration. And um, Peter's guilt, his shame was holding him back. He was not able to live his full Christian life because of the shame that he was feeling. Reminds me of another case study in shame and guilt. It comes from the Walt Disney movie, The Lion King. The uh, key character there, Simba, a young lion, 
who had the tendency to wander off, and one day as he wandered off, he was caught in the middle of a stampede of wildebeest. His father came to his rescue, and he rescued the young Simba, but in the process, the father lost his life. And the evil uncle saw what happened, and he told young Simba, he said, it's your fault that your father died. You must run away, never come back. And so the young Simba runs away to a faraway country, he feels guilt. He feels shame for the death of his father. He doesn't want to go back. But finally, in a moment of reflection, he decides to go back home to rescue his family and to restore order to the pride. You see, guilt and shame can keep us away from our destiny in Christ. And in 2021, we must move forward, move upward, Move with Christ toward positivity, toward redemption, toward restoring the kingdom with him here on earth as we prepare to go to heaven. May the Lord bless you in this new year that you live out your destiny in Christ and be all that you can be. And remembering the story of Peter, understand that no matter how you have failed him in the past, he is more than willing to restore you today and bring you into his presence. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your goodness and mercy. We praise you for the privilege of seeing a new year. And we only ask, Lord, as we go through 2021, that you give us your spirit, your direction, and that uh, our lives may be living testimonies of what it means to live under the direction and consecration to Christ. Thank you for all who have listened today, the families they represent, the churches, the schools that they represent. And until we see each other in person, may your Holy Spirit watch between us. And with, with your blessing that we dismiss this afternoon. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you today and throughout 2021.